and from Brookshire. <laughs> <laughs> so in June of 2007, I had the opportunity to travel to Peru with 12 other students and two faculty advisors for a study tour. We went for 12 days, and there were 12 days that I will never forget. Upon arrival to Peru, we landed in Lima, which at 5 o'clock in the morning appeared to be a dreary and rundown city. As it turned out, we would see a lot of visible traffic. When we ventured out to the city later that morning, the streets were filled with locals selling anything they could, such as sugar cane, chicken on a stick, and accessories that had been handmade. My first impression of Peru carried with me throughout the rest of the trip, and I found myself comparing the different places we visited to Lima. Each city was very different in terms of appearance, climate, and people, but one common theme was the level of poverty. Peru was unlike anything I could have imagined. It was both beautiful and dismal all at the same time. We were very fortunate that on our trip we were able to visit many places. We visited Arequipa, which was a beautiful city filled with great architecture and ancient buildings. In Cusco, there are activities going on non-stop because we were there for the festival, which is their celebration of the New Year. The Plaza de Armas, which is the main square in Cusco, was constantly crowded. There were parades and fireworks, and it was an incredible showing of nationalism. One of the most beautiful places I have ever seen was Coca Canyon. This was a place we stayed at for less than 24 hours, but the views that, that were there were like unlike, or unlike anything I had ever seen before, and that made the long trip there worthwhile. We were able to walk around and explore the area, and there were hot springs to swim in. We saw local farmers washing their clothes in the river and herding animals through the landscape. After Coca Canyon, we traveled to Puno, which was a poor city on the coast of Lake Titicaca. We were fortunate, fortunate enough to be able to hike Machu Picchu. This was a nine-mile hike in a very high altitude and was the hardest physical pain I have ever felt. Unfortunately, many people on the trip got sick from the water in Peru, and I happened to be one of them, which made the hike that much more difficult. <laughs> <laughs> the overall reward and sense of accomplishment that I, as well as the other two hikers, felt at the top of the mountain was one of the greatest memories I have. The history here was really what rewarded us most in Machu Picchu, and we were lucky to have had the opportunity to visit this important site. The place we visited that I enjoyed the most was the Reed Islands on Lake Titicaca. These were islands made entirely out of reeds which floated on the lake. They were inhabited by the early Indians who had lived there for many generations. These people lived solely off of the reeds for many years. Their houses were made of reeds, they ate the reeds, and they also constructed boats made entirely out of the reeds for their mode of transportation. Eventually, the reed islands became a tourist attraction, and now they have people coming on the islands on a daily basis. <coughs> the early Indians used the tourists as a way to make money by giving brief presentations about the island, as well as selling similar handcrafted souvenir items being able to understand around Peru. The mothers go about their daily tasks such as cleaning and weaving while the children play together and tourists look on. Some of the men have had to get a job off of the Reed Island so they are able to provide for their families. We traveled from one Reed Island to another in an actual Reed boat which is very exciting. As we departed the first island, the Euro's Indians on that island sang us a feral song. It was incredible to see these families working together as a means to get by. While we traveled around Peru for quite some time, we had many pit stops which were filled with many Peruvians trying to sell itself. These people would follow you around begging you to buy their products, which in many cases were on packet sweaters and scarves or some other handcrafted items such as jewelry or purses. The level of reliance on tourism money was really high, and this further highlighted the rural poverty of the country. The main language in Peru is Spanish, which made it difficult to communicate at times for those not fluent in Spanish. I attempted to use my many years of high school Spanish to communicate, which often resulted in laughter and failure of trying to get my point across. The people were friendly and wanted to talk to the visitors. The Peruvians that we met at different locations and all of our tour guides were very nice in understanding the fact that we were all unable to speak Spanish. Most of the people we met were able to speak enough English to carry on a conversation, which was great. The women who were trying to sell us were not very fluent in English. However, when it involved making a purchase, it was for them to understand. As pit stops along frequently traveled roads by tourists, there were a great amount of vendors. In most cases, the mothers and their children waited to sell to These women and children waited around all day to sell food first. It felt as if we were constantly traveling from place to place while we were in Peru. The streets were narrow and constantly crowded with people, vehicles, and stray dogs. It was definitely a culture shock to be in this country, but it was important to be able to see what country with high levels of poverty was like. We were all fortunate to live in the United States, but traveling to Peru made me much more aware of that fact. In Peru, there was a lot of poverty as well as hunger, similar to what exists in our own country. Seeing people in the streets made me more, more aware of the issue of hunger and poverty throughout the world. By traveling to Peru, I was able to venture out of my safe and comfortable environment and witness firsthand what life in another country is like. I was also able to compare the similar economic struggles to both Peru and the United States. Last semester, I performed a research project on the awareness of world hunger. 
I surveyed 167 first year students on the Emergency World Hunger and asked multiple choice questions with the facts of the world hunger. In most research, surveys are created by taking questions from previously conducted studies. However, for what I was looking for in my research, I created my own survey questions. I entered the results from the surveys into a statistical program called STSS, where I was able to compare and analyze the results. I then conducted a public awareness campaign around campus, which included the answers to the questions on the survey about work on on very compelling paper. 100 of these flyers were posted around campus, such as in the freshman dorms, cafeterias, library, and bus stops. I had hoped that students would be attracted to the flyers because of their bright color, and then would read and retain the information. I resurveyed the same students after a week, hoping their awareness would have increased. However, from my results, I found no increase in awareness. On average, out of the eight questions asked, two and a half questions were answered correctly. After visiting Peru and seeing the massive amounts of poverty, similar to some of the poverty in our own country, but much more widespread, I was hoping to be able to increase the awareness in the Bridgewater State College community. I wanted to motivate people to want to be a part of the change that is necessary in order to eliminate world hunger. Although my results from my research do not show the awareness campaign, campaign to have been as effective as I had hoped, I still feel that I was able to at least publicize the severity of world hunger and raise awareness of the problem with those I will be presenting my research at the National Conference on Undergraduate Research in Maryland this month, along with 44 other students from Bridgewater State. Hopefully while there, I can continue to raise awareness of this important issue. Overall, my trip to Peru was not only incredibly exciting, but it was also a great opportunity to get to see another part of the world. I was able to observe and experience another culture, which made me a stronger person and more appreciative of what I have. Traveling to Peru also encouraged me to research world hunger, which has been a life-changing experience. I want to thank the sociology department for making these opportunities available to me. These, among many others that have had a BSC, have changed my life and directed me toward my future in graduate school and staff.